Welcome to Marrying Buzz. Today our topic is AVR, which means Automatic Voltage Regulators. When we are talking about the generators, that Automatic Voltage Regulators are uh, essentially components. Before uh, looking to the topic, I will uh, remind you what is the basic arrangement of a generator. So a normal diesel driven generator, it consists of prime mover. Prime mover drives the alternator rotor. Alternator rotor consists of a rotor which having a magnetic field, main field. This magnetic field will cut the stator winding, main stator winding, which cause some voltage to induce and your uh, bus bar output or the generator output will energize and it will show here, let's say the rated voltage, uh, it will be in our example, let's say 440 volt. Now, there should be some device which monitors this generator output. So the device we called automatic voltage regulator, it monitors the generator output voltage. If that voltage is varied, let's say it is lowered, in that case, AVR will detect that one and do some correction. It will uh, produce an DC output voltage, which receives by the exciter of the generator, and it will create some magnetic field. In return, it increases or decreases the main rotor field strength. So it will uh, regulate the output voltage. So this is the basic arrangement. Now our uh, main consideration is today to discuss the internal arrangement and the operational principle of this AVR unit. Before that, uh, let's say in a bus bar system, unregulated without an AVR, let's say, a voltage uh, variation if we consider. In case of starting of a high load, let's say a large electrical motor, then it will cause to reduce the voltage uh, considerably. We call it as voltage dip. This is not good because uh, uh, your sensitive components might get damaged, light might get burned, and your motor speeds will be reduced. Then it will uh, create many operational facts on the normal operating uh, components like purifiers and any other any other machineries. So by regulator device, which means by IACS or class uh, regulation classification society regulatory regular uh, regulations. Marine industry, uh, you have to maintain bus bar voltage or your generator or your AVR characteristic should maintain your bus bar voltage. Let's say in any case of a load variation, the maximum voltage dip should be limited to 15%. And it should be recovered within 1.5 seconds. And uh, they are saying permanent voltage deviation acceptable within plus or minus 2.5% of the rated voltage. So your AVR, automatic voltage voltage regulator, should meet this uh, characteristic of the requirement. So to meet this requirement, we need a device called automatic voltage regulator. AVR, there are two kinds, static, compound, and error operated or brushless. Normally static, AVRs are very much faster than the error operated. We can say it's 10 times faster. It only takes 0.1 second for correcting 15% voltage, where in our error operated type, it takes one second for correcting 15% voltage. Still, it is within the classification requirements. So we can use that thing. In first session, we will discuss, we will be discussing the error operated part. The static one we'll discuss later. They are having two different operational principles and two different arrangements. If you move to error operated AVR, so this diagram which I take from the Danish Hall Marine book, uh, electrical practice, practical electrical book. And uh, this is your generator and the bus bar. So AVR is this unit. It sends the bus bar board. And it compares the bus bar voltage with our set voltage and produces some error. If there is any difference, it produces an error feed into an amplifier. This amplifier amplifies the signal and controls some thyristor circuit 
to control the excitation voltage. As the excitation voltage, this is a DC supply, varies, then it will uh, vary the generator output. This is the basic arrangement. Now let's move the uh, complete arrangement of an AVR circuit. This is the complete box uh, block diagram of an AVR. Basically, the alternator is there, the bus bar, ACB, and it, the, it has a voltage sensing device comparator and the error amplifier, then error amplifier will control some thyristor control circuit and there is a, a regulated um, voltage bridge or diode bridge uh, which produces variable DC voltage and that supply is given to alternator excite. Let's say your voltage sensing device, it consists step down transformer, which uh, sends the bus bar voltage. If it is, let's say 440 volts, 440 volts, it will step down this to a 10 volts, let's say, 10 volts DC signal, here DC and then it's DC. It will convert into AC supply, sorry, uh, that AC supply is converted into DC supply through a diode bridge and uh, with the capacitor circuit, it make, uh, make it smooth. So we'll have a DC voltage which represents the generator output. Normally it is very much less value with compared to the generator output. Let's say in our case, we take the generator output voltage is 440. And if the 440 is available, the voltage sense circuit produce 10 volts out. And this 10 volts output feed to a comparator circuit where it compares this voltage with our set value. To maintain 440, our set value is 10 volts. So if the measuring circuit feeding 10 volts means there is no error, it matches with the set value. Let's get a closer look of this one. Comparator circuit consists of uh, two zener diode circuits and uh, branches. Let's say when rated voltage 440, then you will get 10 volts. As the zener diode drops 5 volts between A and Y, through this resistor, there will be a voltage drop of 5. Same way, in this branch, this zener will drop 5 volts, where else you will get 5 volt drops through this resistor. And if someone measure this voltage between A and B, what happens? Here 5 volts and here 5 volts with respect to Y point. So A and B voltages are same. So output voltage is zero. Which means this is our set value. The set value is made by this uh, zener and resistor arrangement, right? So it's very clear. If you have 440 rated voltage, let's say it is represented by a 10 volt signal, in that case, there won't be any error. So, no any excitation variation will occur. Let's say now your bus bar voltage dropped down to 380 volts, which means 9 volts. Then the voltage drops here 5 volts and through this resistor 4, then this resistor also again 4 volts. Then between A and B, voltage drop will be minus 1 minus one minus one so whenever the bus bar voltage drops as per that the dc measured voltage varies then the voltage between a and b also get varies this signal will feed to a comparator op amp amplifier uh, circuit then this will feed to another amplifier circuit for uh, uh, firing the process the uh, thyristor firing circuit in the other case, if you have oversensitive over voltage situation, let's say rated voltage 460, uh, 440 and it exceeds to 460, in that case, it produces, let's say, 11 volts. Voltage drop uh, between uh, this res uh, resistor will be 6 volt. Here again will be 6 volt. So A and B voltage, if you measure, it will be plus 1. Then this signal uh, will reduce the excitation. Of the generator. This is how the comparator circuit used to uh, make the correction of the uh, produce the error signal.
And this error signal, whether it's plus one, minus, or whatever, it's feed to an error amplifier, which consists of transistor and become many uh, integrated circuits, which may have gain controller, reset action, or group characteristic. Group characteristic we require to have when uh, generators are run in parallel to control the reactive loads. In another session, we'll discuss what is the importance of the group and how it uh, effect on the KVAR load sharing or reactive load share. Right. So this amplifier error, the error signal get amplified and it's used to control a thyristor triggering circuit. You have a, a diode bridge. We call it as a regulated voltage bridge or variable uh, supply source. Not like that. Um, ordinary four diode bridge this consists of two scrs so then you can vary the output dc signal it is not a fixed value if you have variable dc supply to the exciter then it will impact on the alternator main field then of course it will vary your output if your output is less then it detects by the measuring circuit feed into comparating and feed into amplifier and do the correction in the scr bridge increase in the excitation value right it it is not directly sending to the exciting excitation winding it direct through a uh, circuit called stabilization circuit it's a negative feedback circuit it monitors the rate of change of the correction to avoid any uh, over correction overshooting situation because otherwise the voltage might get uh, exceeded output voltage might get exceeded to avoid that to over correction you use a negative feedback and that uh, gives back the signal back to the amplifier circuit to reduce the correction now let's move how this scr circuit is uh, working SCR is a device, same like a diode, but it has different behavior. It has additional pin we call gate pin, anode, cathode, and gate. Unlike normal diode, it will not con uh, conduct, it will not allow any current to pass through it unless that you are giving some gate current or gate pulse. This should be positive with respect to your cathode, and then only it starts conduct. Once it start conducting, doesn't matter the gate current is present, gate supply is present or not, it will continuously conduct until either you remove the supply, disconnect the supply, or your supply getting uh, the polarity getting changed, the plus minus getting changed. Let's take this example. So the uh, thyristor external appearance looks like this. It may be like a transistor, three pin, but its characteristic behave same like to uh, the diode, a diode circuit. We'll have a separate discussion on thyristors in another session. For today's example, how it's vary the DC current, I'll take this small example. This is your supply. This dotted line represents the AC supply which is produced to the tiles. The second uh, diagram uh, chart is used to indicate the gate pass. In this case, you can see as the supply voltage starts, the same time the gate pulse is given, which means the conduction will start from here and going. Conduction will stop here because the AC supply polarity changes and no conduction through here. Once it reaches the positive cycle, it will start conduction because we are again supplying some gate pulse at this point. So it produces some output and output stop again because of this gate pulse, it will produce some output. So full top half this time will get as an output. Because that we are firing the trigger in the gate signal as the starting point of the uh, positive uh, supply half cycle. 
right? Positive cycle. In second case, let's delay the triggering with respect to the supply voltage. So here, no any current flow until we start initiate the triggering. Then start is uh, conduction is started. Here, no conduction, no conduction. When it triggers, that time start conduction. So this second time voltage, average voltage, if you see, it is very much less than the first case. The third case is much more drag the triggering, so the lowest voltage. By varying the thyristor pulse triggering point with respect to the supply voltage, then you can alter the or vary the regulate the output voltage of a thyristor. So this is the principle that we are using here to uh, control the excitation. Then uh, there is an additional circuit, rapid voltage built up circuit. This part is used uh, for initial starting up. As we know, generator, while starting, it uses only the residual magnetism. So it's a very small uh, voltage build up. So we have to take it rapidly to the rated voltage. So we don't want to wait measuring, comparing, amplifying, triggering, correcting. So we don't want to wait for that time. Only for starting time, Initially, boost up is taking uh, do, doing by the rapid voltage build up circuits, a special circuit. So, the generator will take into initially uh, rapidly to the rated voltage. So, this is all about the <laughs> error operated AVR. Uh, next day, we'll move to discussion of static AVR. If you have any doubt about the generators and operations, in my other videos, the previous videos, I'm uh, describing how the generator operation and how that voltage is creating, building up, these things have been discussed. Thank you uh, for everyone. So let's meet on next session with the static area.